In nature, there is no dirt. Everything is in its right condition. The swamp and the worm, as well as the grass and the bird. All is there for itself. Ah, the swamp. A place where few humans dare to tread. And with good reason, as we will find out in tonight's story, when the protagonist enters the swamp at his own peril. We've survived Halloween, and it's on to Friday night. Yes, I know I did a video last night, but I'm back again with another on this beautiful, beautiful Friday evening as we enter November. Well, my dear friends, we've all had a long, long week, and I think you deserve to now sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. Standing at the end of the wooden dock, I watched the black, murky water. We last saw her here, one of the three boys behind me nervously said. You don't have to do this. I could taste the disgusting smell in the moist air. Crooked trees and branches protruded from the water. The sounds of buzzing insects, frogs chirping, and awkward bird songs hadn't stopped for a second since my arrival at the swamp. Beside the dirt road, which led to the small dock. The tall reeds and other plants made it impossible to tell where there was solid ground. Long branches allowed very little light to enter, creating shadows which added to the confusing surroundings. The little to no wind left an uncanny sensation. I handed my leather satchel to one of the children before unbuttoning my white shirt and taking my shoes off, leaving me with just my pants. I'll be gone for a while, but I'll return. I smiled, causing the boys to instinctively take a step back. Now return to your homes. It's not safe here. Remember, they can't leave the water. Now hurry! The kids waved and jogged away. Knowing that if I gave it too much thought I'd change my mind, I jumped into the swamp. Without the typical splash that comes after a dive, Three solid seconds passed before my body was entirely submerged. The disgusting water flooded my lungs. It left a sticky feeling when I opened my eyes. Slowly and cautiously, I descended. Twenty feet down, I finally saw the bottom. Just as the children told me, a human corpse became visible as my feet touched the swamp floor. Fish fled from the recently deceased, rotting body of a woman. Animals had eaten her eyes and lips. Pieces of skin were missing in places. Her arms were firmly wrapped around a small book she kept close to her chest. I extended my arm to retrieve it. Two of my fingers tilted it to the side, revealing a silver cross around her neck. It felt as if my hand was inches away from fire. Before I could pull it back, the woman grabbed me by the forearm with her dead hands. Unholy creature, you will be punished for disturbing my resting place. Her voice echoed through my head. I'm here to help. Your brothers miss you. My pale hand began to turn black. You deserve a proper burial. I quickly pulled my hand back as her grip loosened. Skin began to grow back. Her body healed. A young woman sat on the swamp bottom. Beautiful green eyes stared at me. My brothers. A slight smile formed on her tired face. I haven't. She paused. You met humans, yet you haven't devoured them. I'd never hurt them, nor you. I'm here to help. My eyes moved to the book, which had fallen to the side. That book. I'd be grateful if you gave it. She picked it up. Father never told me what it was, only that I had come to the dock with it. It contains instructions to defeat an evil entity. I came to your home to retrieve it, learnt about you along the way, and decided to help. How honourable of you. Undead. I don't believe you. I don't know why you want this book, but it isn't to do good. I don't trust you. How can I prove my intentions are pure? 
She gave me a sad look. You can't. Her arms wrapped around the book once more as her body took on its old, hideous visage. For a second, I felt the water become warmer. Three rotting bodies with exposed bone began to crawl out of the floor. I knew this swamp had taken dozens of other lives, and I was seeing three of them now. I wrapped my arm around the dead woman's waist. If we weren't underwater, I would have definitely caught fire. I forced my slowly darkening, undead arm to pull her and the cross closer. I felt one of the creatures grab me by the shoulder. Using my sharp nails, I swashed its fragile arm off and kicked it back. The silhouettes of two more approached. A total of five had surrounded me. I began to swim up as fast as I could, while multiple hands attempted to grab me. One of the creatures had somehow gotten closer and wrapped its arms around me, slowing me down with its extra weight. I sunk my razor-sharp teeth into its weak neck and ripped its head off with ease. I burst out of the water, still holding the woman. Just as I reached the shore, one of them grabbed her by the ankle. Two more tackled me back under. The damage from the cross would have rendered my arm useless very soon. Despite ripping them off with my free hand, I kicked and struggled towards the shore. With a loud grunt, I hurled the woman onto the dock. Five had jumped me and were slowly dragging me deeper. I felt one let go, then another. Something grabbed me by the hair and pulled. I turned up and saw the three boys from before. Two held large sticks and slammed the creatures off of me, while the third dragged me out. The moment I was entirely out of the water, the reanimated bodies retreated. On knees and palms, I calmly vomited the swamp water. Oh, I told you it's not safe here. Why didn't you leave? I turned around and saw them kneeling next to their sister's body. I gave them a moment of silence before continuing. You'll have to carry her to the village. I watched the shiny cross. One of the boys gently removed the book from her hands and handed it over, along with my belongings. You're hurt. I picked it up with my good hand. Don't worry about it. Exposed, burnt bone stuck out of my darkened limp arm. The pain was excruciating, but I knew it would go away eventually. I'll escort you back. Night will come soon. Let's go. As we walked back, one of the boys nervously glanced at me. Your wound. You have to, you know, fix it, right? Their scent was intoxicating. The need to devour flesh was overwhelming. I realized I was staring at him as if he was food. I shook my head and smiled with my mouth closed. Relax, it's not a problem. My eyes moved to their dead sister. I could see them holding tears back. In another hour, we reached their village. Two of them carried her into one of the wooden buildings. The third one turned to me. We're grateful. Thank you for doing this. Why don't you... I put my finger up and shook my head in denial. Don't invite me in. The boy nodded. I have a question. I looked at his sad face. Yes? He entered his home. When you were saving me, did you really have to pull me by the hair? I smiled. He chuckled before shutting and locking the door. I looked at a few of the villagers who had a threatening glare around me. One held a hunting rifle. I hastily walked away from their home. It took me another hour of walking when I finally saw an actual road in the distance. The ground there was solid and had less plants, making it possible to move more freely. Rather than continuing to the road and out of the swamp, I took a sharp left turn. Several minutes of stepping in ankle-high mud, water, bushes and reeds passed, when I entered a small clearing. Wearing waterproof gear, gloves, boots and a bandana, my colleague, tall muscular man, 
sat on a wooden coffin in front of a small fire. The reflection of bright embers could be seen in his goggles. Two off-road bikes were leaned against a tree to the tent behind him. One of the twigs I stepped on let out a loud snap. The man was now pointing his unholstered revolver at me, an iron cross hung on a chain from its barrel. Relax, it's just me. I put my good hand up. Doesn't mean you're not dangerous. He didn't hide the resentment in his deep voice. I kicked mud and dirt in the fire, extinguishing it immediately before walking up to him and rubbing the cross with my fingers. Get rid of this. You're embarrassing yourself. Doesn't work if you don't truly believe. He spat to the side and lowered the revolver. Do you have it? I searched for the book in my satchel. Here. Take a look. My colleague pointed at two small furry bodies to his sides. Yeah, caught you some rodents. Bon appetit. He took the book afterwards and carefully flipped through the pages. The world around me faded into darkness. The only thing that existed at that moment were the two dead animals. I tore chunks of raw meat, bone and fur, swallowing them whole until nothing remained. I was far from sated, though. This is good. My colleague compared the book with a bigger one he'd retrieved from a bag between his legs. I licked the last blood from my lips and fingers. How so? From what I gathered, this is a journal which belonged to a cult member. One who's been dead for some time. Last entries fifty years ago. A cult. Do we know them? As far as I know, no. The swamp is home to their god, some nature spirit, which is supposedly immortal and all-powerful. They came here searching for that power. This nature spirit, if it is truly this strong, it might be able to defeat our guy. Well, there should be a powerful weapon in this swamp. If this isn't it, I don't know what is. My colleague handed me the book. Page 7. There is a map. The cult constructed their own little hideout. It's marked. I quickly memorized the map and returned it to him. What about you? Aren't you coming? I scouted ahead. It gets too dangerous in less than a mile, and the sun will set soon. I can't see in the dark. All right. Keep my coffin safe. I left the camp. Swarms of mosquitoes ignored me as I pushed branches aside, Swam through mud and climbed over dead trees. The two-hour walk through the swamp ended with me seeing a light between the reeds in the distance. A poor imitation of a church, composed of dark, rotting wood, had been built in the middle of a larger clearing. Slightly tilted towards a pond, knee-deep water flooded its interior. From this angle, I could see the back of a man who was doing something. Seconds before ambushing him, I noticed a small camera tied to a tree. He turned around and I could see he was setting up a tripod for his other camera. The man wore casual clothing with little to no protection against the swamp. A better prepared woman with waterproof gear ran out of the wooden building. Bill, something's showing on the camera, she shouted and pointed at my direction. Both of them had a flashlight mounted on their shoulder. I dove into a pile of mud before they reached my location. The woman had a tranquilizer gun in her hand. There was movement here. Bill held a camera behind her. What did you see? Did you film it? She held an infrared camera with her other hand. Oh, damn it. I'm sure I saw it. Does it really have horns? I didn't see the one we're looking for, but well, I saw something. What? What did you see? The lizard man? She stared at the footprints I'd left in the mud. The invisible man. I saw branches and reeds forced apart as if an invisible force had passed through. Look, more footprints. She took a step back and looked at a random direction. Hey, I know you're here, she yelled. We don't want to hurt you. I crawled through the mud as I listened to the woman yell at nothingness. The tilted side of the building was flooded, while the other side was dry. 
monitors were set up in the dry part of the interior. A woman calmly slept in one of the three sleeping bags. Survival supplies were scattered around the floor. A book titled Swamp Cryptids stuck out of an open backpack. These were one of the many groups searching for fame by catching something supernatural on camera. They were definitely not cultists. How they found the place, I didn't know. I heard someone approach and instantly rolled over behind the woman. I slightly lifted her along with her sleeping bag and hid underneath. Hey Linda, I think we found something. Come out and help. Bill tapped with his foot in anticipation. I attempted to imitate how I imagined she'd sound. I'm sleeping. Go away. I answered with a womanly voice. He took a step forward. Linda, are you feeling all right? Uh, I think I caught something. I'm feeling a bit sick. Don't come any closer. I prayed she wouldn't wake up. You sure? We might be onto something. I'm good. Hey... Did you find anything in here by any chance? I pushed my luck. He chuckled. <laughs> Please don't tell me you forgot about the statue. Remind me. His cheerful demeanor disappeared. We stored it in the backpack. Oh, you really aren't doing too well, are you? He extended his hand towards the woman's forehead. Before the man moved too close to see me, I revealed enough of my body so I could kick him in the jaw. Unconscious, he claps to the floor. Just as I began to crawl out, the woman woke up. I put her in a chokehold and waited for her to go back to sleep. Before doing serious damage, I released her and got to my feet. Oh, why does it always have to be so hard? I tore a chunk of wood from the ceiling and dropped it next to the unconscious man's head. After checking if the monitors with the stored footage were waterproof... I pushed them in the water. I quickly glanced at something gold in the backpack, lifted it out, and ran out of the building. The other woman was too busy searching for me in the distance, so I took the chance to take an alternate route and ran. Covered in filth, I reached my colleague's camp. Retrieved what we needed. I displayed the backpack. Did you know some kids were filming there? I read more of the book. Whatever you do, you must not bring anything out of their hideout. I nervously unzipped the backpack. And uh, why shouldn't I do that? According to the journal, everything of value they brought in their hideout was a tribute to the forest spirit. If someone were to take anything, the spirit would see it as stealing. I pulled out a small golden statue of a woman in robes. Oh, too late. You stole that? Well, the cultists weren't there, so I consider it as coming across the statue. The cultists have most likely died off, but this curse might be real. I rubbed my chin. Well, that means the spirit will come to retreat it. Well, we want to talk to... I felt a chill run down my spine. My colleague raised an eyebrow. You all right? For the first time in months, I felt cold. Uh, I think my body was shivering uncontrollably. Hey, snap out of it. His words became distant as I dropped the statue and collapsed. Everything slowly went dark. Everyone has felt it. That feeling when you're having a terrifying nightmare and you wake up. Skin soaked in cold sweat and an audible, rapid heartbeat. But it's all good. You calm down. Look around and see it's just your room, your bed, your haven. A place of safety, far away from the horrors lurking in the dream world. Hey, wake up, sleepyhead. I heard Jennifer's cheerful voice. My eyes opened. Jenny? I slowly got up and realized we were in our apartment. Who else would it be? She gave me a confused look. We leave for work in 30 minutes, remember? I looked at the mirror on the wall, and I saw I had a reflection. 
My blue eyes stared back at me. The red cheeks I used to hate were back, and my skin was normal. When I put my arm against my chest, I felt a heartbeat. I smiled widely, displaying all my white teeth. Are you all right? Jennifer chuckled. I wrapped both my arms around her. Oh, I'm never letting you go. Okay. She hugged me back and smiled. Did you have a nightmare? Oh, a horrible one. She squeezed out of my embrace. Oh, not that one about the evil cats again, is it? <laughs> I wish. I began to dress. It was pretty crazy. I dreamt that a monster visited us last night, forced you not to love me, and transformed me into a monster as well. Then I went crazy. But these two guys came along and then we... Jennifer interrupted me with her laughter. <laughs> Sorry, go on. I smiled back and kept on talking. Oh, we had to kill a bunch of monsters to find the main monster. We'd already killed like five, but the sixth one was really strong. We heard rumours of a powerful weapon in this, this swamp. Oh God, does each guy fantasise about fighting monsters? To some extent, yeah. <laughs> the love of my life kissed me and locked eyes with me. Well, you were definitely dreaming. One, you're too kind to fight anyone. And two, no matter what, nobody can force me into not loving you. She paused and kissed me on the nose. I'll go check the mail. Humming a cheerful melody, she walked out of our room. I got a carton of orange juice, poured myself a glass, and walked out to the balcony. Leaning on the railing, I admired the city. Are you going to drink that? A figure appeared in my peripheral vision. I jumped back and turned to face it. A blonde woman in a white dress stared into my eyes. I let out a sigh. <sighs> This isn't real, is it? She slowly shook her head. Are you conjuring this dream? I asked. Yes, this entire place is my creation. Oh, judging by where we are, you have access to my memories. God, why do this? Curiosity. I wanted to see what you'd do. You did the wrong thing. Who are you? I believe you called me a nature spirit. Ah, oh, yeah. Sorry about the statue. Do not apologize, dead one. The statue is merely a way to communicate. I passed her the glass of orange juice. How so? She took a sip and smiled. You found the journal. Yeah, that's how I found the statue. They wanted control over me, but they lacked the strength to do so. Those monsters imprisoned me within their church. I can see and speak through certain objects which were left there. How can I free you? You want to free me? Why? For my power? In all honesty, yes. You can see what I've seen. The evil I'm fighting is too strong for me to take on alone. But in no way do I want to control you. She took another sip from the glass. I sense evil in you. Corruption, you're not pure. If I lend you my power, what stops you from taking the place of this evil you speak of? All I want is to bring her back. I looked at the interior of the apartment. Have my old life back. Tell me, how many have you devoured? I didn't answer. She slightly tilted her head. I know you keep count. You enjoy it. Seventy-nine. And I didn't enjoy it. I hear you like dogs as well. How many? Twenty-five. Those are the ones you ate. How many did you murder? I felt my anger take over. I didn't choose this. He did it to me. Oh, but you always have a choice. You chose to be a monster. I walked up to an inch away from her face. I'm no monster, I yelled. You're pathetic. I don't want to be freed. Something deep inside took control of my body. 
If you unwillingly give me your power, I will take it. She shook her head in disappointment. There's no redemption for you. I'll devour your flesh, I shouted. Feeling like myself again, I opened my eyes. What happened? My body was back to its undead form. My colleague stood in front of me with his revolver drawn. Thick chains held me against a large tree. I felt four bullet holes in my chest and two in my head. He holstered his gun. You collapsed and let out incoherent shrieks. Then you got up and tried to eat me. Do it again, off goes your head. Don't blame me. The statue did it. It messed with my head. And I quickly explained what I'd seen. He picked the statue up and stared at it. Nothing's happening. He slammed it in the ground and kicked it. This thing's indestructible. I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm freeing that nature spirit. Don't care if she wants it or not. Now, untie me. Untie you? You know, I recall a little deal we made. What are you talking about? You promised you'd never lose control. If you did so, you said we can kill you. I'm all right now. It was only temporary. He slid a machete from the tent. Always start simple. What if there were others nearby? What if I wasn't here? That little rampage of yours would have ended quite differently. You also want him dead. You need me, I hissed. I haven't received an envelope in a while. My boss apparently thinks I've helped enough. If you planned on ditching me, why did you come and help me in the swamp? I wanted to see if I could get a bonus, but statues, journals, nature spirits, cults, oh, too confusing. Maybe I'll get a bonus for your head. He put the machete blade an inch from my throat. I widened my eyes. Drop your weapon. He chuckled. <laughs> you really are desperate. Deafening sounds of gunfire came from deep within the swamp. My colleague took a step back as a bullet penetrated his shoulder. Getting populated. How many people are there here? His eyes scanned the trees. A second shot hit him in the chest. He grunted and crouched down in a big bush. Hunting rifle? Who the heck did you lead back here? I fought to squeeze out of the chains. Oh, definitely not the filming crew. Your stupid campfire must have attracted them. Accompanied by a third bang, a bullet penetrated the bike's tires. We listened for a fourth, but nothing happened. My colleague had covered himself in mud and grass. Whoever you are, take my advice and leave. I don't want to kill you, he shouted. Sparks flashed as one of the chain's rings next to my heart burst into pieces. With the chain broken, I began to free myself. Halfway out, I felt the latest bullet enter my chest, penetrate my heart, and exit into the tree. I coughed, but kept on going. The second I was free, I ducked down behind a pile of mud. My colleague had disappeared somewhere. Both him and the armed attackers were unseen. The statue laid in the center of the clearing. Arms out, I jumped at it. I grabbed it and rolled back in the filth under the reeds. The shots had come from two opposite directions. Either the marksman was really quick, or there were two of them. A small glass ball flew out of the trees and landed in the center where the statue had been. It cracked. Multiple miniature marbles leaked out and spread on the ground. My grip loosened. Oh, there are so many, I whispered. How many? Hundreds? Thousands? I have to know. I ran out of my hiding place and fell to my knees. One by one, I counted them. One. I dropped to the side and picked a second one. Two. A net came flying from the bushes, pinning me to the ground. God, I hate that trick. Hardly overcoming my compulsion, I pushed the glass orb and marbles in the mud where they slowly sank.
Someone was running towards me from behind the trees and long grass. I chewed through the net, picked the statue up, and fled. Speeding through the swamp, while taking multiple bullets, I reached an area densely packed with plants. I submerged myself in the waist-high water and waited. I think I lost them. Ten minutes passed. The evil I was fighting wanted me dead. It had sent people who knew my weaknesses before, and these were definitely two of them. Two hunters, my murderous ex-colleague, the filming crew, and a bunch of villagers who didn't like me all that much, all roamed the swamp tonight. I had to be extra careful. Oh, this sucks. I had a better time swinging in the sewers. I complained aloud as I scaled one of the taller trees. The cultist's hideout was visible from that vantage point. An armed figure stood behind three kneeling ones. The cultist supposedly trapped her, but she somehow speaks through the statue. I adjusted my satchel. If I destroy that building, maybe it will free her. I jumped from tree to tree, till I was close enough to see the armed figure. A tall pale woman in black leather held a hunting rifle. She wore some kind of goggles, and her clothes were spotless. Eyes covered with cloth, the filming crew were lined up on their knees. A bright lantern on the ground illuminated the entire clearing. The trees closest to it had strung garlic. Marbles leaked from more glass balls scattered all around. If she was one of the hunters, the second one had to be close. I ripped the straightest branch I could find and began sharpening it with my nails. The sharp stake in my hand was two feet long. I cleared my throat and let out an ear-piercing shriek. She instantly aimed her rifle at my direction. Covered in swamp filth from all the crawling, I stood completely still on the top of the tree. A few seconds passed before she fired her rifle. A dead bird fell from the neighboring tree. Constantly scanning the area, the hunter slowly approached. My stomach rumbled as I felt my craving for flesh grow. At the same time, my bulging muscles tensed. Now, having exited the clearing, she saw me. The rifle was still not pointed at me when I launched the stake. Black liquid ran down her neck. Face first, she collapsed in the wet mud with a splash. Along with the clothes, her body fell apart into ashes. I waited as close as I could without being affected by the garlic marbles. It's safe, I yelled. The filming crew took the cloth off their eyes and stood up. Bill and Linda ran inside the wooden building. The woman, who held a tranquilizing gun from before, took a step forward. Who's there? she yelled back. Your saviour. She's gone. Are you from the police? Uh, yeah. Can you get rid of the garlic? She hadn't noticed the strings of garlic. Okay. She tore them off and dropped them in the water. Also the marbles. Marbles? She looked at the ground. Cover them. She kicked dirt and mud over them. Ready? I emerged from the darkness and entered the light. Oh, thanks for that. I smiled with my mouth closed. I'm grateful. And don't take this the wrong way, but you look horrible. She walked up to me. What's wrong with your eyes? You have no pupils. Oh, well, uh, Cosmetic contact lenses. The swamp filth hid the bullet holes all over my body. I'm uh, from the military, aware all of this is camouflage. The woman gave me a suspicious look. What's going on here? Who was that person? Wait, did you kill her? I handcuffed her to a nearby tree. She works for a um kidnapping organization. Kidnapping organization? She raised an eyebrow. Are you sure you're from the military? The other two exited the building. They'd packed their backpacks and equipment. Bill smiled and extended his hand to shake mine. Thanks for the help, man. Who are you, by the way? You look familiar. He's from the military, the woman answered for me. I took a step back. You guys see a second-armed person running around here? Fear creeped onto Bill's face. 
There's a second one? Uh, no. Um, can you three find your way back? It's pretty dark. The woman crossed her arms. We can handle ourselves, Mr. Military Man. The three of them walked away. I entered the poorly constructed building and found one of the supporting pillars. Oh, hope this works. I bored my fist and punched it. The entire building trembled. I punched it again, leaving a crack that time. I ripped a plank from the wall and stood at the exit. I threw the piece of wood at the pillar as hard as I could and jumped back. It burst into two. The entire building trembled and shortly collapsed, leaving a pile of lumber. Hey, nature spirit, your prison is no more. I drew the golden statue from my satchel and waited. A sharp pain ran through my brain. You freed me, her voice echoed in my mind. Oh, and uh, I'm not expecting anything in return, I answered aloud. I didn't plan on giving you a reward. She sounded irritated. You don't seem too happy. You have your freedom. I denied your offer. Ever think I preferred being trapped? Mm, no. That doesn't make any sense. I've grown powerful through the ages. So powerful, I've become a threat to my swamp. I allowed the cultists to imprison me in order to protect my home. I scratched my chin. If you give me a part of your power, you might become less dangerous for your home. Win-win situation. The more I age, the more strength I gain. The more I age, the hungrier I get. I wanted to protect the living from myself. How the cultists trap me, I don't know. Protecting the mortals is no longer an option. Where are you going with this? There's a new settlement nearby. They might be enough for a few sunsets. Then I'll have to leave my swamp. Her voice faded away with those last words. I looked around. What does that mean? Everything was silent. I felt the ground shake. A large crack crawled out from under the timber and moved under my legs. A second one formed. Mud and grass lifted, sending me down on my back. I watched stone and dirt burst open. Armoured scaly plates began to emerge. Big as a car, the head of a giant alligator emerged. As it crawled out, more of its hideous body could be seen. The enormous creature ignored me and dragged itself into the water. As shallow as it was, it somehow managed to submerge its body inside. I watched the head disappear, then the torso, and finally the tail. I stood up on my feet and stared down the deep crater in front of me. Well, I uh, pictured that going differently in my head. I arrived at my ex-colleague's camp, only to see him down on one knee next to his bike. I cautiously took a few steps towards him. Hey. Hey. He didn't turn around. Are you, um, doing well? He casually got up and faced me. Yeah. That's good. I made an awkward pause. I killed one of the hunters. That's good. I killed the other one. He looked at my coffin. Yeah, kept it safe for you. Thanks. Hey, look, man. I'm sorry I tried to chop your head off. <laughs> I was in a bad mood. I smiled. Ah, forget about it. They got you twice. You feeling all right? Four times. They shot me again after you fled, but it's all good. So, um, does that mean you're staying? Hell no. Once I fix my bike, I'm out of here. I scratched my neck. I, um kind of did something. Oh, if you killed someone... He raised his voice. No, no, I haven't. I actually rescued three people. My colleague calmed down. So, what did you do? It can't be that bad. I, um, released a giant telepathic starving alligator from his prison. Mind if you repeat that? He's probably going to attack the village. Oh, that sucks, but... Well, good thing it's not my problem. He turned back to his bike. Don't see how it's your problem as well. 
I'm no monster. I made a mistake, which might cost dozens of lives. Gotta fix it. Good luck, bro. The man lifted his bike with one hand and handed me the journal with the other. Got places to be. Later. He calmly made his way through the mud and reeds. Thanks for nothing. I looked at my bike and coffin. The only things he'd left behind. Well, in that case, I'm doing this solo. I kneeled down and opened the wooden coffin. Crammed inside lay a rotting, dead dog, scattered clothes and a machine gun. I changed my filthy clothes with clean ones, dragged the canine body outside and closed the coffin. The Doberman had a vicious bite mark on its neck. I need your help. My palm hovered over its forehead. The dead body began to twitch. Its lips and cheeks shrunk back, revealing irregularly sharp yellow teeth, even for a dog. Pieces of sticky flesh peeled off the canine's balding body. Yellow crooked claws burst out of its paws. Grey eyeballs with no pupils locked on my identical ones. A long, pale tongue hanging from its mouth. It crawled up to its feet. The undead hound disappeared in the tall grass. I followed. We sped through the swamp, jumping over large roots, ducking under crooked trees and taking shortcuts through neck-deep mud and water. A starving evil from deep within growled. I hadn't eaten anything in days. For a mere moment, whatever I was doing lost all meaning. All I could think about was flesh. I quickly snapped back to reality and kept on moving. Why? a distant whisper asked. Why do this? I want want old life back. Loved again. I let out a hardly coherent hiss. Think outside the box. There's so much more to the world. I am no monster, I growled. Of course you're not. You're beautiful. Stop doing this to yourself. Just a taste. You deserve it. Silence. Leave me be. I sunk my nails into my head and shouted. You want to be loved. Nobody loves you. Nobody ever will. Except for me. I'm always here for you. I love you. I kept on running. She... She what? She's gone. The old you is gone. Sometimes you must know when to stop. I burst out of two large bushes and could now see the village in the distance. I stood still. I won't give up. My body trembled. Give up? Why would you give up? Just get your priorities straight. Oh, I'm a good person. I'll stop the evil man. The voice was no longer a whisper. I could hear it as if a person spoke right next to me. Everything you've done since those fools persuaded you to start this little heroic quest hasn't felt right, has it? I slithered down to the ground under a tree. I'm doing things right. Stopping bad people. Saving good people. Do good and good things will happen to you. All this time and you still don't get it. There are no good or bad people. There is no right or wrong. A loud crash sounded from the village. I looked away and hugged my knees. I did everything right. I bit into my arm. And you were unsuccessful. It was awkward, wrong and confusing. I chewed. The disgusting taste of my undead flesh was repulsive. I heard screams from the village. The voice kept going on. Maybe this just isn't your story. Maybe you should just let it go. Black tears raced down my pale, rotting skin. I shook my head in denial. There must be a happy ending. There has to be love in the end of this dark tunnel. The light in the end of the tunnel will burn you. Stay in the dark where it's safe. That's where you're the strongest. Three boys, one of which was holding a young child in his arms, and their mother, ran out of the burning village. They saw a hunched creature in the mud. One of the boys stopped his family and smiled. Wait, that's my friend, the one I told you about. He helped us bring sister back. 
He can help save our home. Slowly, the creature stood up. A man in muddy, torn rags faced the family. His grey, soulless eyes stared through them. The boy ran up to him and gave him a hug. You can do what humans can't. A giant monster is attacking our home. Please help us. The man put his cold hand on the boy's shoulder. The skin on his fingers had peeled back entirely, revealing black flesh and bone. A long slit formed from ear to ear as he unhinged his jaw, revealing sharp teeth. The boy instantly ran back to his family. Don't move, the pale monster whispered. The family stood still. Their eyes glanced at each other's frightened faces. All of you look delicious. It licked his claws. Starving. I stood in front of the humans and listened to the voice for further instructions. The order didn't come from inside my head. It came out of my mouth. Without a trace of humanity left in its face, the creature quietly hissed. Devour each other. It turned its back and walked towards the swamp's exit. Shouts of agony, apologies and prayers sounded from the loving family as they tore into each other's flesh. So uh, that one was kind of all over the place, wasn't it? Not quite sure what to make of that story, um, but an interesting one indeed. Well, it was set in a swamp, at least at the start, so what better time than now to give a shout out to the one and only Swamp Dweller. Um, we've done some work together in the past, we've collaborated, and he's got a very fine channel. If you're not familiar with his work, um, let me take the chance to uh, introduce you to him. He does some really good videos. Um, link in the video description below <laughs> so go check him out well i am exhausted oh that extra thursday night shift for halloween really did take it out of me so i need to relax for the weekend will there be a episode of a series on sunday well you're just gonna have to wait and find out aren't you i've been promising uh something coming up and um, i'll try and stick to it but we'll just wait and see <laughs> i'm waffling on now aren't i well that is definitely enough for me for this week you all have a great weekend, and right now, I just need to say one more thing, and that is to wish you sweet dreams, and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin' experience... And come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>